I'm not even going to try and bother measuring the exact thickness of this bucket because it's obviously it's got a knife edge here and then it gets to one thickness here and then it uh, it actually on on the top here it goes as a ridge goes up but on the bottom there's actually some spots here there's some ribs so what I'm gonna do is find a spot where it's thickest overall and I'm gonna use this old wooden clamp basically this is simulating my slot that I'm gonna have to cut and I'm stick that on there like that and I'm gonna make sure these two these two gaps right here they're parallel in other words I want this as open here as it is here and put this on and the idea being find find a measurement or a gap where this slides on but it still fits so that's a little tight if I go right there now I gotta get my scale so I can measure make sure I'm parallel I got my small scale and if I look at this, I can see that that's an inch and an eighth, and that's under an inch, so this one's going to come in. Why don't we go with one inch? Let's see how that looks. So one inch there, one inch there. Let's split the difference. That's, that's going to be... About an inch. It's gonna come in. Wow. A little bit of fudging. But eventually, get to where I am right there, which is my gap here is exactly one inch as is here. So if I keep this straight like this and I look. I see. Won't go. So a one inch slot's not going to do it. Let's make sure that it's close, but it's not going to. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll shoot for an inch and a quarter. So this one about a half a turn. This one about a half a turn. That's an inch and an eighth. Well, apparently I forgot to charge the battery in that camera, so that battery died. So I'm back to the bloggy. Bad news is it's only been on the charger for a couple hours, and the owner's manual says it takes 300 minutes to fully charge, which is that's five hours. <laughs> so I don't know how long it's going to last, but we'll work while we can. All right, so I'm satisfied with uh, one and an eighth inch as the size of the slot that I'm going to cut. Now, I've got this double plate situation going here, so the slot has got to be, bottom of the slot has to be lined up with uh, where this second plate is. Uh, that way this will be bearing on the underside of the, the bucket as much as possible. So I'm going to take that into account. And then uh, as far as the depth of the slot goes, the deeper the slot is, the weaker it's going to make these side walls. But by the same token, if I make it too shallow, then it's not going to really engage on the bucket that well. All right, I uh, scribed the line one and one eighth, I'm sorry, one and five eighths inches up from the bottom edge here. That should put this, if I uh, cut a groove here, that should put that groove right at about the top of that second plate. Uh, so now I'm going to clamp a straight edge on here and use it to help me make a nice clean cut as opposed to all that freehand stuff I've been doing up until now. 
All right, I've set that straight edge up about three eighths inch off the line. Let's see how that uh, how that works out. It's because that tip's got a beveled edge to it. I've either gone too low with the line here and I'm hitting the uh, side of that plate or there's something else in there. I'm going too low. I'm hitting the, I'm hitting the bead, the weld bead that's on the inside that attaches the, that, that plate to the sides. I thought this plate was straight and it's got a big bend in it. Duh. All right, if this wood doesn't catch on fire, I think it's gonna be better because now I've offset it so that when I put the edge of the torch right here up against it, it's in the right position. So I don't have to worry about this bevel because as I'm changing the distance a little bit, the bevel's causing it to move. It's still a pretty straight cut, but uh, we're gonna see if we can improve on that right now. Well, this group's shallower, so I'm gonna move my guide over and get it about as deep as the other one. Doesn't look too bad. Give you a look from this side. Guess I should have moved the camera over here in the first place. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it doesn't need to be perfect. Let's see if I dare to freehand this bottom one. All right, close enough. I think I'm gonna wanna put it on the loader and see how it fits. Oh, I had to go into the phone. Well, anyways, it's already four, it's already after four o'clock. I can't believe the day's already gone. But I gotta leave soon to pick up the kids, so. Let me at least see if I can slide this thing on. This will be my first, this will be my first uh, attempt at uh, what it's going to be like to uh, to put this thing on the machine. The trick is I've got to drive up and get the lip of the loader right into that slot.
gist of it. Let's see if why widen the camera angle a little bit here and see if we can't uh, get the other boom on. I need a pin. Alright, I got me a pin. Nice long one. Get out of this weld apron. Since it's getting hot. So these are one of the ones I kept because it's a solid pin. Most of the pins I sold had grease fittings in them and they were hollow. This is just a solid hunk of steel. I actually kept it for turning stock in case I wanted to make something. I don't, know, I don't think it's hardened. And if it is, I could also I could always anneal it. But now I'm really glad I kept it because it fits in this. So it'll handle 200 pounds. <laughs> uh, I think it'll be a handy kind of thing. And I'll figure out some way to, uh, some way to lock this in better. Thank you. You know, a couple of angle plates, piece of angle iron, one welded on each side, and then uh, a bolt going through the horizontal part. It's either a hole that's uh, threaded or a big bolt welded onto the plate so that I could tighten the bolt and it'll clamp down on the bucket. That's what I'm thinking, but I don't have time to do all that today, unfortunately. So, out of, out of time. But I, uh, I'm not entirely unhappy with that result. Well, I decided, since I gotta bring that loader arm back to the scrap pile, why don't I test the boom out on that? So, I got a, uh, I got a chain just wrapped around there and it's wrapped around that pin. That pin's kind of seized in there, so I'm gonna have to work on getting that out and uh, come up with a better way to attach things to the end there. But for now, we'll just uh, use that. Of course, I forgot. Normally, I just take the end of the chain and loop it through the hole there. I'm just try and hook it that way. gonna stay on there when I'm driving but basically I just wanted to test it out and the, uh, the other thing that does is that keeps uh, something that I've got on the end of the chain there if I'm driving and it's swinging there's no danger of it swinging back and hitting the front of the tractor you know the area where the radiator and that is so uh, I'm gonna try driving with that on there and see what that's like but uh, I'm gonna sign off for now